Hello and welcome again in a new video of the React Hook Form series. In this video, we are going to take a look at uh, some simple things. We are going to put the finishing touch to the validation, and I want to revise some things that um, I don't think were clear enough in the last lecture. Yeah, I think I had the receipt here as well because we were receiving the form. I think we already went through this, so I'm not going to go through this. Okay, so yeah, uh, let's get to it. So if you take a look, um, if you remember, I had this, and if I go, I, I supposedly I should see an error right, right now, but there is no error. So if I type this, if I give this two letters, and yeah, so okay, one and still no, okay, uh, yeah, uh, maybe 18, okay, 13. As you can see, nothing because this is supposed to be less than 13, so 12, still no error. Uh, text, no error. Uh, not a valid email, no error. Um, password and another unmatching password. As you can see, it showed only when I clicked this. Yes, it should show earlier. It should show with every input. And I think before it was showing for when I started using the package. But then I'm not sure what exactly happened. So anyhow, I took a look into the documentation and found that you should add some options. You can add some options to the use form uh, hook. By default, there are some values like these. These options are getting default values, and you can edit them by adding them and giving them different values. So yes. So let's get to it. So right here in our use form hook, we are going to open an object, parentheses, and inside of this we are going to put the options. Now the first options is the first option is mode. If you open quotation mark and these yes, here you go. These are uh, emit suggestions. You got all, you got on blur, you get on change, you get on submit, you get on touch. By default, on submit is the option that's running. And this means that your validation is going. This is this mode controls when your your validation shows to the user uh, or starts kicking in. So uh, this means that by default your validation is going to start kicking in on submit, which means when you click submit, your validation is going to show. Now we want to change this. So let's go with uh, each option and discuss what it does. So first of all, I'm I'm not going to go with all because all means. Uh, a mix of couples, so I'm going to go with the options one by one. Now, on blur is um, well, on blur, let's see how what means. I think what it means is that you uh, each time you put <laughs> you leave one uh, one input to the other, or it's going to check show the validation. So, let's see what does it say about right here. Yes. Yes, on the blur event, so I think the blur event means that you leave from one to another. So let's try it. Let's just see how it goes. Now I am going to, yes, reload my page. So, okay, sorry. Okay, so I just want the terminal right here because the console right here because I like to see my console. Okay, now I'm going to type one character, two characters, and leave. Okay, this is because this is alright. Now one character and leave, and yeah, there you go. Now I'm going to see, leave empty and leave. Okay, so as you see now, I'm getting automatic uh, validation that uh, I have an error. I don't need to click submit to see my errors like this because if you, if you click submit, as you can see, you'll, you'll see the errors. So not having on submit here doesn't mean it will ignore errors on submit. No, it will show you the validation errors, but it will be a little bit more performant, a little bit more user friendly, and it's going to give the user user. A little bit of a better user experience because it's gonna be annoying if you type a wrong username and now you fail 10 to 12 fails and you click submit and boom you're up again it tells you that you have to type three types this maybe that maybe that when you could have just changed them one by one so now uh, let's see okay as you can see it's a little bit more performant and it's giving me different errors on the fly so it's a it's accomplishing what we needed uh, or what was supposedly discussed uh, in the first uh, tutorial because yeah in the first tutorial as I remember it was working fine then when I started adding all these different inputs and these different validations uh, it kicked in and uh, when I went into the, co into the documentation the own submit option is uh, by default the one that's running so we change it, uh, we change it to on player now there is one change, and one change is going to run uh, when each input changes. It's similar to what we were having here when you had a value and 
on a change but right here now every time this event kicks in because this ref register runs these two in the under the hood so every each time this on a change event uh, runs uh this validation will kick but if you take a read in the documentation you'll find that it is not recommended or not the best terms for performance in some time or some case some use cases you might need it as you can see but uh, it as they say it comes with significant impact on the performance so it's not the best to the perform because it leads to multiple re-renders which is basically the same thing we are using react whole form to avoid but maybe at some use cases you might need it so i felt it's better to mention so uh, let's save and try to see how this will be working so i am going to reload again now I am going, as you can see, it does not do anything because I didn't change the empty yet, so this is not on blur. So now I'm going to type, oh yeah, okay, so I'm going to clear, and as you can see, now, it needs to be changing. So if I go to the age and leave the age, it's not going to show unless I submit, now it's shown. Now, for example, let's type this phone number, yeah, because it's not a valid phone number. Now it's not, it's required, now it's not valid until it's valid again. This is, this is a, a random phone number, and it's working. Now for the email, um, I don't think it's actually great from the user experience, because the user still started to type. Like, imagine you are in an exam and you're still starting to think about the solution of your problem, and uh, somebody comes and say, it's a wrong answer. Dude, I'm still just thinking about it, or I'm still typing it. Maybe it's going to lead to the right answer. And uh, well, React Talk Form doesn't know if it's going to lead to the right answer, the wrong answer. Like, I'm going to start with test and it's, going, it's saying uh, invalid. Now I'm going to say uh, Gmail, for example, or a test or whatever. Dot com. And now it's valid. So I don't think from my user experience it's great, but maybe at some use cases you would need it. I think Blur might be better. Uh, okay, so now untouched is another option and the touch it runs as soon as you touch this input so once you leave the input i think so right here now right there yeah as you can see so uh okay so now i'm going to type one character it's not giving me an error yet because i'm not leaving a second character and deleting it's nothing okay so one character now i leave and now there i think this is the best one because it doesn't tell the it doesn't yell at the user it does it does give the user a little bit of space to make a mistake and once he leaves that input, it tells him, hey, uh, there's an option. So I think if I'm going to be, uh, and this is just a personal preference, you don't have to go with me. If I'm going to be chosen between one of two, I'm going to be chosen on touch or on submit, based on, uh, you know, uh, the preferred option between them. Now there's this interesting one, it's called all, and this one uh, trigger both on the blur and don't change. So I think it mixes the, the blur and don't change. Uh, okay, so let's try this one. Um, let's see what it does. So as you can see now, I'm going to lose this again. Here's it. Okay, so yeah, okay, so it's still on me now. I'm leaving and I'm leaving again and it's still on me. So on change, if you remember on change, it doesn't tell me when I leave the input. But uh, it only tells me after the input changes. So it's not the best, like if I leave the input, it won't tell me until I submit. But now all is going to be mixing between the change and the blur. So it's going to tell you when the input changes value and it's going to tell you if you leave the input empty without changing value as soon as you touch the input and then leave it. But as I said, it's the same as on change because it's basically run on a change in addition to on blur. So it's going to be less performance. So let's leave it on the on touched, I think. Okay. Yeah. No. Ah, uh, sorry. Great. So I'm going to leave it as this, I like this one. Now there are a little bit more other options. One of them is criteria, yes. The criteria mode is, uh, it has two options. One of them is all, one of them is first error. And uh, it's related to gathering the errors. I'm not really sure what is this about because it shows you different errors. But I think um, by default it's running on first error and we're going to just leave it right here and as you can see i'm going to leave the default values to the last one and the resolver as well the resolver is going to be in the next video or two videos because we are going to discuss how to validate with zip and uh, maybe joey uh so it's uh, i'm going to be using the resolver for that if you want me to tr show how to validate with react talk form and uh, another third party patterns uh, package that's uh, available for validation 
one of these uh, just feel free to hit me up in the comments and I will try to make a video about this but I'm going to be going with the app and I'm going to be going with Joe because I, I like them a little bit uh, they, seem, they seem similar to be honest and the same nice uh, not, not, too, not too many boilerplate code just simple right to it and uh, that's my preferred style I think Zod is the same but um, I'm just going to go with, with the two of them and if you go back to the documentation okay well this is not here nor there so let's leave it uh, it's time so uh, yeah the revalidate mode I think this is uh, very important so if you add this revalidate mode now the revalidate mode gives you three options it doesn't give you the all and it doesn't give you the untouched so on player it's the same as the same three options now the, the revalidate is what kicks in after you click submit like if you click uh, this button and the unsubmit function runs and there are errors now it's going to define how you deal with these errors like when do they disappear when do they reappear and i think i'm going to try with it on blur for example to be honest i haven't tried much of these options because i didn't feel the need to do them use them that much okay so yes this is a burn because we have it untouched now all these are not appearing yet uh, as soon as i click submit the phone number is going to show first yes okay let's click submit and there you go now i am going to be typing one two and the error is not done yet okay now it's gone so this zero disappears on blur correctly but i want it to disappear on a change so yeah okay now I'm going to load the page, click submit, and now if I click two characters, I'm expecting this error to go away. So I'm going to be one, two, yeah. Okay, so this is the difference. Now it's it, it the revalidation mode removes the error from the input that has an error or invalidation as soon as it changes to a correct uh, input according to your uh, validation schema for that input that you have right here. Now the own player is not going to revalidate this input and check um, if that input has no error or not unless you leave that input so you have no idea of knowing so right now i'm going to be typing this is valid and it's working wow <laughs> yeah that's not right so yeah right here submit okay submit okay okay so one two three yeah as you can see I don't really have any idea how the error is, if the error is gone or not, until I leave. So once I leave, I will know. So this is the own blur, and this is the difference between all blur, own blur and doing a change in terms of uh, that error <coughs> of uh, revalidation. Okay, so I, I think the third option is uh, on submit, and this means that it will not remove the errors until you click submit. Let's see. This is by default is running for validation, not revalidate. I'm not sure. I think what's running for validate by default is the only change. So right now I have uh, this error. This is because the first validation runs on touch. It. Now the second validation is going to run on submit. So right here now I'm going to change this. Okay. Yes. As you can see, the error is not going to go away. Even if I leave, it's not going away. Now if I click submit. As you can see, the error gone away. These errors are not going away because tells us are not matching the validation. <coughs> so uh, let's sum this up a little in uh, in a fast way because I think I said a lot of information right here. Uh, the mode and the revalidate mode are similarly the same thing. The mode is the thing that runs on the first submit, and the revalidate mode is what runs after you click submit and if there are still errors. By default, the mode runs on submit on uh, has a couple options. The default option is on submit, and this means that the errors are going to show only when you click submit button. Um, the all is a mix between on blur and on change. On blur means that the error is going to show once you leave uh, out uh, of the input. On touch and on blur, I'm not really sure about the similarity. The difference between them, I don't feel there is much, but I. I feel there's a slight difference and I like to touch a little bit. Uh, the only change means that the error is going to show as soon as while or while you are typing inside of that input. 
the reveal date mode have just three options on submit on learn to change and this kicks in as soon as you click submit there are errors now this is the mode you are going to be going on uh, zone blur is clear we already discussed it to discuss the change and don't submit and the difference between both uh, three of them on plan don't change or different that on blur is only the, the error is going to change the error message that you're showing there to the user is going to change only after the user leaves the input to the second input and uh, or where wherever he clicks the cursor outside of that input if that error is fixed already or uh, if a different error is there instead of that error the only change is going to change the error and what you are displaying to the user as soon as the user changes his input. So if, as long as he is typing, once he changes the state from one error to another, or if he is cross all the criteria of you have put for your validation scheme. So that's it. Now I'm going to be using this on blur and I'm going to be using this on touch because I like them like that. Okay, so that's it. These are the options in the use form. I think these are going like this is going to be giving me the best performance I would like for and the best user experience. Of course, it's my opinion. You don't have to go with it. You can play around with these options and try um, what's available there and see what works for you. And if you have any notes about this now or want to discuss some more, just leave a comment in YouTube. Uh, Alright, so I guess that's it for this lecture and I will see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.